Today we are here in the sewing room. I'll be sewing something while I chat to you about something super exciting coming up on the channel. Getting settled in to sew something real quick. I want to give you a little bit of an update. Maybe a bit of an insider look as to how it looks like when I'm producing content for you. Maybe I don't usually film myself sewing in here because it's so hard to set up the lights and everything. I think that when I'm filming tutorials, the most important thing that I want you to see is what I'm seeing so that when you look down you see the same thing that I'm looking at. Rather than showing you things like that then you have to switch them in your brain and anyway that is the reason why I don't film tutorials in this way. But I'm not filming a tutorial now, I'm just going to sew something and give you a little bit of an update. As you know I am a one woman team, I do everything myself. I think over time since I started the channel in 2017 I have been able to improve on a lot of things like the way I present on screen, the, you know, being camera shy in the beginning, it's really weird to look at the camera. That sort of improves over time. And then comes the thing about learning, actually how to make videos, learning how to edit, improving on that aspect. You know, I am a person that sews first of all. That is where my real strengths are and my knowledge really. The, the tech world came in later and it's been a struggle for me to learn those types of things. But I have been learning and I think over time you've noticed a bit of an improvement with the way that I edit. So there's been a little bit of a journey on the channel and if you've been here for a while you might have noticed how things have improved over time. And I've been trying to keep a balance on improving the sewing, how I'm presenting the sewing to you that the tutorials are super clean, that sort of aspect. In the past, I cringe back when I look at old videos, how I used to hold the camera in my hand and show you sewing things and everything would be shaking. And I know I dislike seeing that when I look at videos, so I don't know why I was also doing that. You know, I've invested in tripods so I can have like a stable image so you don't get dizzy. I'm just stabilizing some shoulders here with clear elastic. It's white, it's got embroidery, it is a neat. Now, I don't sew with white generally. I have very few pieces in my wardrobe, barely any actually. So I thought, why not? Why not? I bought the fabric to sew with it. So I thought, yeah, it's the time to do it. <laughs> anyway, when I'm trying to think about what I'm gonna show you and the videos and the videos I'm gonna film, I try to have a, a deadline for myself, but I'm very open to changing that because there are so many things that happen that get in the way of that. A lot of those things that happen that makes my process harder have sometimes a lot to do with other people and other things that I have zero control over. And I might be super ready to film and be outside set up. Someone would pass by with a machine blowing leaves or just someone would just start cutting the grass or drilling holes. It made me even want to cry sometimes because I just can't film in those conditions. Sometimes I've had to get my husband to drive me to another location so I can film where there's no noise. And yeah, it's been really rough and you might think, why don't you just film inside? As most people do, I have a really echoey house, really echoey, and it's been really hard for me to improve the quality of the sound in that respect. You know, even putting a rug that covers the whole floor, having humongous curtains. You know, recently I've put up these panels on the wall, professional acoustic panels, and I hope that improves everything. But I also enjoy being outside and I think I live in such a unique environment. I have such a beautiful area out of my home that I want to show off. I think it's refreshing to see such a green place that you can see the humidity, where you can hear the noises, the sounds. I enjoy being out there. Part of my identity has always got to do with the places that I live in. It's always changing, you know, but I've been here for a few years already. I've been struggling with work-life balance and having time off and not having enough time away from all of this that I do. And it's because there's a lot of barriers to what I do. You wouldn't believe there's just so many things that make everything harder for me. Like right outside this window, there's a house after the wall, like the neighbor from the back. He has a huge air conditioning unit there that is super loud. Like whenever he turns it on, it's like, it's like there's this diesel motor right there, right next to me. And if I'm trying to film a tutorial, I can't block that sound off. And it just, yeah, it makes me want to cry when that happens. So what I end up doing there is just filming in silence and then doing a voiceover, which is not the same. It's not the same authenticity of me talking and teaching of what I'm actually doing on the moment. It's not so spontaneous as it would be if I'm doing it at the same time. I'm just surging the edges of side seams here. Nothing really interesting for you to see, believe me. Another thing that you might find silly is that I live in Brazil and in this area of Brazil, Sunset is pretty stable year round, like it, it's always at 6 p.m. around there. In the winter, the latest it's ever been is like 6.30. You know, I do get up early and I try to make the most of every day, but sometimes I can't finish my project or take pictures 
before sunset, which means I can't film. It got dark really, really fast. So I brought one of my lights outside, which means the next day is really stressful and just, there's just so many stressful things happening. And I've taken a little bit of the joy of what I'm doing. I still love it, but all those little barriers that are just happening continuously is just like, no one needs them. I, I certainly don't need them and I don't want them. <laughs> and you know, especially because they're things that I can't control, like I can't do anything about them, you know? So here's when this plan started um, coming to life a few months ago. Been saving for quite a while to just purchase some things that are gonna make my life easier. And the idea is setting up a proper filming studio downstairs. We have a spare room that we never use. It was actually just full of boxes of things that we purchased. All the boxes went in there. It was just a whole bunch of junk in there. And I had filmed in the past there in 2019, just in the empty room, you know, I was really clueless and I got so many complaints about the noise quality. They're like, it's so echoey there. And I was even annoyed. When I watched back at those videos, I wish I could take them down because the sound quality is so, so annoying. I have a really good microphone, but just the acoustics of the room were horrendous. Look at a little clip of a video back then and just tell me how annoying it is. I just find it so annoying. It was either in separate different videos or together, it depends on how I organize. I have all the footage, all the pictures. That's why I only filmed a couple of videos in there. I had terrible lighting. I had put a rug as doing an effort, you know, but there was, yeah, it just was not a place that I could have set up permanently to film videos. So I wanted to set one up permanently, but now doing it properly, you know, investing in that little room so that I would always have a place that is 100% ready to go for me to just go there, switch things on and bang, start filming. <laughs> it's been a little bit of a process to go in there, measure things, plan what I'm going to do, do a lot of research into how I can improve the lighting in there and the sound quality. I want you to just have a really good experience when you hop onto the channel. I don't want there to be any disturbances that can just distract you from the sewing content, which I put so much effort into and I think is really valuable for you. So I'd love you to stick around, you know, and watch my videos for longer, not just watch half of them, you know, that, that's the goal. And just make the channel as best as it can be. I'm always a person that wants to improve everything, change things around a little bit and just just put all my effort into this because it is my job. <laughs> it is what I do every day. I do it more than full-time hours and I just want to make this better and better and better for you. So although I have in the past resorted to filming in the same room, every time I want to do that, it takes ages to set up. I have to move tables around. I have to move my ironing board out of the way. I have to just do so many things to make filming in here possible. And even then, it's not the best place to film. We, my husband was really keen to help me out and just was really encouraging for me to do this. So let me show you and look at the room, how it looks down there, how the audio sounds, just, just how it is bare and just so you can see the before because I'm really excited to show you the after. So this is the before of the studio. The room is empty. There's absolutely nothing here, just bare walls ceramic floors, nothing. You can see the lighting is terrible. Sound quality is super echoey. I'm just filming it like this so you can tell what the difference is when this is done. I hope it's a big difference. I'm really excited. I was having a couple of fun days ordering rugs, measuring the room, seeing the type of curtains I needed. I needed them to be from the floor to the roof so that they could cover as much as the window and the wall space as possible to get that echo to go away, you know? I thought about making the curtains myself, but as I was saying, I don't have time for that. I, I just don't have time for that. I'd just rather buy them. I was able to purchase them. And my time is really valuable at the moment. I'm so, so, so busy. So I'm not gonna waste time on making curtains. So I bought them, just bought a whole bunch of curtains and put them there. <laughs> My husband helped me drill, you know, because I'm not going to be drilling that. That's, I don't like that stuff, you know, if he's around, I'd rather him do it. Nikki filmed him doing it from the back. He's, he's never appeared on the channel, but you can see his back. He's <laughs> just putting some holes there. So on a sweaty Sunday, we set all that up and I was able to film a clip. So you can see the audio quality just with those small changes, just with the rugs and the curtains. And I think it improved already. So let's have a look. There's still no special lighting, nothing going on. Just. Just a little bit of rugs and curtains, I think makes a huge difference, you know, already. Testing, testing the sound quality, seeing if there's any annoying echo. So also I've done some research on acoustic panels and these ones on the wall here. So I was able to purchase online. Um, I got a, a deal from a person in another state in Brazil. They came from far away 
and I was able to purchase eight of these panels. They are pretty big and I was able to put four of them in the studio downstairs where I'm going to film videos and also four in this area. So I mainly film tutorials here, I put the microphone, the camera, the lights, everything is around where I sew. And so this creates like a little corner where my voice is gonna land on these instead of on the walls. The audio I, I found is improved already. The other thing I did in this room was put another rug. I only had one. Now I have two, so it just covers basically almost all of the floor, which is something I really resisted because <laughs> I like having my bare feet on the cold ceramic floors. It gets really hot here and I don't need the furry, you know, carpet underneath, but hey, I've done it for you, you know? Also, when I drop pins and threads, it's just harder to clean up and pass the vacuum and everything. With the ceramic floors, it was just a breeze to clean and, and keep it spotless because I just need to feel like everything's really, really clean and tidy for my brain to work and I feel happy being in here. So I'm in here all the time, so. So we hung up those panels downstairs on the walls and then just figuring out the lighting situation. I bought some more lights. <laughs> I have four huge lights. In this room, I have two lights right there, both sides. To have downstairs in the filming room, I have a, another two light big soft boxes and also some other small lights. And look, I'm no interior decorator. Like I do not do that sort of thing. It's just not my thing. I wanted to do something really simple and pretty at the back. I have those letters that I painted myself that say sewing and I bought some fake candles <laughs> to give a little bit of a, a light thing at the back. Now in the past, when I filmed in this room, I had real candles there and they freaked me out because, you know, I forget to turn them off and it's a hazard, you know, real, real candles can be a hazard, so that's no. <laughs> Fake plants because I am not able to keep any plant alive in this planet, I just, I just do not have that gift. Don't think I'm not ever going to film again outside because I will. I love being out there, I absolutely love being out there. But there are some types of videos where it gets a bit cumbersome to go out there with a pile of fabric if I want to do a fabric video or if I want to show a lot of garments or just a sit down video actually. I, I don't seem to be able to relax out there that much because I'm always aware of the parrots up there or the dog from next door and that sort of thing. So I'm going to have a nice place, it's going to be amazing where I can also film videos. I can just go there and do it and it'll be amazing, it'll be pretty, relaxing. <laughs> And you'll be able to see everything really nice. Everything's gonna be nicely lit up and you'll be able to hear everything really, really nicely as well. So I'm sewing a really simple knit garment that I've already made in the past. I already have a tutorial on it. So that's why I'm just sewing while I'm talking to you. And I'll show you what I made at the end. So I'll take you there and show you how this little room is looking. It is 90% ready for me to use. I mean, it's, it's, it's ready to use basically, but the actual room is set to go and ready to be used. And I didn't just want to use it one day and you not understand what the heck is this. That's why I'm making this video, just to show you the process a little bit and have a little chat. I know this is a very different video to what you're used to, but hey, every now and then we can make it a little bit more personal, right? Even though I always say it's just about the sewing. I am actually a person here behind the channel. I do read all your comments. Everything you tell me means a lot to me and I'm just, I feel really connected to you anyway. Every now and then one of these videos is okay. I think. Anyway, let's look at the room and how it's looking. Okay, so we're going in. You can see the curtains from the roof all the way down to the floor. The floor is covered entirely with carpets just the whole thing even that little piece right there i was able to put a carpet what you see on the wall here are the acoustic panels so those are going to help with echo i have two there i have one standing there on the door of the closet they're hanging with those hooks there and at the back i just have very simple things nothing too special a little light that will give it some color i can change the color there i've just got it pink for now and over here i have big lights I also have a light on the roof that I don't know if I'm going to use. I'm so proud of it. It's so pretty. Look, I don't want to make a huge clutter and decorate a whole bunch of things, but I'd like to do these little, little subtle things like these little painted sewing machines on the wall. Something little. What is pending for you to notice a big, big difference will be sort of mid-March. My husband right now is in Michigan. He had to travel there for work. He will be gone for about three weeks. And yeah, it's not nice when he travels, but he hadn't traveled for such a long time because of the pandemic, you know, he'd been at home for all this time with us. So that's nice because he does travel a lot for work. And I've been purchasing on amazon.com in the States, the things that I need. I want to get a new camera, lots of little things that I just can't get here for a good price. So I do get them for a little bit less when we get them over in the States. 
So he's just gonna bring me my new camera. And the camera I'm gonna have is just gonna help me and improve my life and just make things easier for me. I'm drenched. If you see like any glistening of any sort, it's just basically sweat. It's really hot. <laughs> I'm just gonna finish sewing what I'm sewing and I'll meet you back at my completed new filming room so you can see it in all its glory and I'll show you what I've made right there and I'll reveal to you what I've been making right there in that little room. See you there. Hi friends, so this is a setup. I'm super proud of it. It looks really pretty. I'm not gonna be going crazy with decorating. Maybe the things I still want to improve on are lighting. And in regards to sound, I will be getting a better microphone. I do have a pretty good one, but it's a couple years old. I feel that I need to upgrade that also. But for now, I feel that I can film in here and that it's a pretty place for me to just film and just be ready to share all the content I prepare for you without worrying too much and stressing too much about what's going on outside. Okay, so if you really like it outside, I like it too. So it's not like I won't ever film out there again. I will try my best to always prioritize out there. But when you can't, you can't. And then this place is here and I think it's really, really nice. I feel it's me, it's just very simple, very understated, but it's gonna accomplish what it needs to do. And I'm so happy. I hope you're happy for me. And if you see me in this new environment, you always know that I'm here because I could just couldn't do it outside, basically. I bet you're wondering what I was sewing up there while I was talking to you. And it's something white, something that is totally out of my comfort zone. I probably have one top that is white in my whole wardrobe and I don't wear it that much because I'm always scared of staining it. Last year I bought this beautiful, beautiful embroidered knit. I've used this type of material to make a lot of other tops and I've used it in black, in navy and I found it in white and I thought why not? If anything, this type of fabric is gonna motivate me to sew it and to make something white. What I've made is the Terra Tunic. Now I've made this one before and I've even made this version before. I've made it in black. It's one that has an asymmetric collar right there. So this is a pretty well-known pattern. What's happened to this pattern is that it, it's been retested and re-updated. So previously the sizing just went up to 3X. Now it goes up to 5X, up to a 59 and a half inch hip. So before it didn't have a full bust option and now it does. So, so it's basically matching what the newer patterns are having and you know, all the older patterns are getting updated. You know, this, this process started in 2019 and there are so many patterns, you know, it takes a little while, but it is a process that's happening at Love Notions and that's really good. So this pattern is only $5 today, it's Feature Friday, but because it was retested and remade, it's gonna be 25% off through the weekend as well, Saturday and Sunday. It's really hard to film white, so I'll try to get out of the frame. But here's the asymmetric collar. I think it's really, really pretty. Now I have a front seam there that goes right above my bust. It is a front yoke and I did it there to save fabric. <laughs> I always do that type of thing and I have some top stitching there. Now this one does not have a sleeveless view. It does have a sleeve with several different lengths there for, for options but I wanted mine sleeveless and I've just made it sleeveless. <laughs> I took about an inch away from there and then just smoothed the curve up to the original and then I added this band that's three quarters of an inch wide. So that adds the length that I need at the back here so that I have nice cover. Here is the side seam with a split hem or twin needled. So the Terra tunic is a tunic but I don't wear tunics so this is shortened quite a bit. I've also evened the hem so it's the same front and back. So this is actually a Terra top. <laughs> I don't mind having a sleeveless garment that has this type of collar. I think it's really pretty. And I'm just gonna put it on and show you how it looks. Keeping it simple this time. I literally got this out of the machine now and then I need to edit the video. Okay, so I had to end up coming outside anyway because this white was making my face look yellow and making everything dark. I don't know what white does to cameras. So here's the asymmetric collar. It's very nice. Because I added a band there, that's why I made this narrower so it wouldn't turn out to be like a dropped sort of shoulder look. When I do sleeveless, I want it to finish right there. And then here it closes it up very beautifully. The band just brings it all in because it's shorter than the armhole. So you don't get any gaping. So that's really nice. So you can see it's definitely not a tunic. It hits the mid hip. I sort of know what length of top I like. Easy for me to measure from here at the highest point of the shoulder down and make it the length that I want it to be. I really like it like this. This is a size extra large little slits on the side I think it fits really well this fabric is more medium weight it's not structured I think it's semi structured but I think it really works for this design and for this collar not to flop and be all messy up here I think it's really pretty love it white why not <laughs> Thank you. 
I might as well finish the video out here while I'm all set up. <laughs> Don't forget to grab your Terra tunic this weekend. It's such a lovely pattern. It's got so many different neckline styles. It's just pretty, you know, I just make them as tops. Uh, length adjustments they don't matter what, what matters is the design up here at least that's what I look at so I already do have two videos about these patterns I'll leave it linked down below so you can have more information if you want to I just wanted to share my white version expect to see this styled with some skirts you know I've been missing a white top I always thought why don't I make one well I have so maybe the next video will be filmed in the new room who knows maybe it'll be outside but I know that having that room there is gonna be a huge weight off my shoulders. I know I have a place. I know I can go there and film and get my things done. And I won't have that stress always present in my mind of trying to find a place to film. So thank you so much for joining me today. This was a very weird video. I know it had everything all over the place, but I don't usually make videos like this. So it's usually about sewing. This was a little different. I hope it was fun to watch. See you again very soon and have a great weekend. Bye.